My name is Samantha Stearman. I have a degree in anthropology with an emphasis of archaeology uh, from Portland State University. My focus was the Native Americans and the area of the Pacific Northwest with the emphasis on the mouth of the Columbia River and the Willamette Valley. Um, I first discovered Napton Cove about 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago, when I came here completely on a whim and noticed the artifacts that they had in the museum. And I knew right away how important this place was. Uh, there is stuff here that I haven't seen in other museums locally, and I knew this place was really special. Archaeology is really important for a number of reasons. One of them is because it tells a story which we might not have. It kind of fills a piece of the puzzle that might be missing. We do have written records and narratives of people that have been here or worked here or lived here, um, but what a lot of people don't realize is people can have a bias without them even trying or wanting to. Um, everybody's personal experience and how they were raised leads into how they tell their particular story. Um, that might be great for their experience, but if there's multiple people, multiple cultures involved, we might not be getting a full piece of the puzzle. What's great about archaeology is with the artifacts, the artifacts aren't biased. They tell us a piece of what happened in the history of a particular area or people. Um, this area is really interesting because we've had at least five occupations of this land. We start with the Chinook Indians who we know were here for about 10,000, 12,000 years. Uh, they were here up until about the 1840s when the malaria pandemic hit and took out a lot of those numbers. It was only a short time later that the uh, donation land claim happened and we had our first families here living here in the 1850s. About 20 years later, we see our cannery era uh, in the 1870s, which lasted up until about the, uh, 1898 when the quarantine station era started. Quarantine station lasted until 1938, in which case the land was a surplus and uh, Nancy and Tom's parents bought the land and it became a fishing village or fishing camp in the 1950s. The nature of archaeology is usually uh, within the dirt. Newest stuff is on top, oldest stuff is on the bottom. It's important to note that no archaeology has actually been done on the site. Every artifact that's been found here has been found on the top of the soil or in the tidelands. Um, it would be an amazing endeavor to do a dig here because I do have full confidence there would be amazing things underneath the soil. Um, because of the nature of the, the timeline and how things work, we have of course, the most knowledge of the 1950s, the fishing camp, and then the quarantine station. Those things we have pretty solidly. We have a lot of records, we have a lot of items. Uh, we can get a pretty clear picture of what those times were like on this land. Before that, it gets a little bit rustier. Um, it's, what's really interesting is we don't see a lot from the uh, donation land claim because there weren't a lot of people on this land. The cannery, not only being a little bit later, but having more people here means there was more trash discarded, there was more artifacts around, so we do have a little bit from that era. Interestingly enough, the Chinook, who had this land for could be as much as 10,000 years, we, have, we don't have a lot from them. That is because that is the oldest occupancy and that is the farthest beneath the soil. There was a uh, really interesting excavation done about five miles west of here called Station Camp or Middle Village, which does have a lot of similarities to this land. It was also a cannery, it was the McGowan Cannery, and then a um, transitory uh, Chinook land complete with plank houses. Um, I do feel um, pretty strongly that if digs were done here, we would find a lot of similarities between this location and Station Camp right down the road. Um, there are a lot of artifacts we could find here from all of the um, occupancies of these five layers that we know about. 
Uh, we know about the medical supplies. We know about the cannery, some of the bottles and sh pottery shards and even, even cannery tags that we have from that era. Or the land claim, which we have some dolls and items of personal use from that era. With the Chinook time, uh, since it was so extensive, we could find anything from animal bones to arrowheads or projectile points, lithics, um, anything, burnt rock from fire pits, um, and possibly even plank houses. I would not be surprised at all if those are lying beneath the soil. Um, I'm really excited at some point to potentially do an archeology span dig here, um, but so far nothing has been done. Um, but it's really important, the, the archaeological record is really important because it tells us a story, it fills in a piece of the puzzle that we might not know. There's no record from the Chinook. I mean, we know they were here, but there's no written record. So those artifacts speak for themselves. The cannery, those artifacts speaks for themselves. It's really, really interesting and I'm really excited to be a part of it.